Have you ever wanted to paint a portrait, but you thought, there's no way, I don't have enough talent? Today I'm gonna to show you guys how to paint a portrait of the very handsome and talented Danny DeVito. You don't have to paint Danny DeVito if you don't want. You can always paint your ugly kids or your ugly husband or whoever the heck you feel like. But I'm gonna paint Danny DeVito. And I'm gonna do it in the easiest way, the cheapest way possible, and anybody can follow this tutorial with no experience, so good luck. So what do you need? You need a canvas, right, first, and uh, you need a palette to mix all your stuff, some brushes, cheapest thing I could find. You need some paint thinner too to start off, and I put my paint thinner in this little container, and then you need paint, uh, white, it's important, black, uh, ivory black. I got some a pink color here, some burnt umber, and I've got a container full of a lot of different stuff. Yeah. Uh, then we're going to make some gesso and cover our palette in it. Really just don't want our canvas to be white or like a skin tone. And I managed to make like a perfect skin tone accidentally. Try not to drop your paint all over your table. You got to clean all that up and cover your canvas. I like to put a lot of gesso on it so it's smooth and I don't get like the, the texture of the canvas. Um, my, yeah. That's, yeah, whatever. So how do we get our picture on the canvas? Um, we're just going to do a charcoal transfer because that's super easy and it's gonna save us like five hours. So um, you just uh, take your photo, print it out big, cut it down to size, take some transfer paper, put it on the canvas, tape your picture onto the canvas and then start tracing it. And it's gonna leave a nice outline for us to go over with the paint. Um, if you're a big fan of drawing or you really like the process, you think it looks better, do whatever the heck you want. Um, I like drawing, but I also like saving myself five hours. So we are going to do that because this video is about making a Danny DeVito in the easiest way possible. So um, what do you do here? Just, just trace every line really. Um, make sure you get light and dark areas and shadows, trace it all out because that's really gonna help you later. And um, this goes pretty quick, probably took me five minutes, I don't know, something like that. And um, yeah, it's simple. Definitely do it this way. Time to paint. You can see I changed the color of my canvas because the stupid skin tone is just gonna screw us up later. And um, we're just gonna block in color here. So really basic colors, lights, darks, they don't have to be perfect. Step one is just covering the canvas in paint. And we're just making sure we get light areas, dark areas, just like kind of a base coat for our painting. Nothing crazy. Um, think of this like, like polygons and at Nintendo 64 or um, better yet there's a there's an artist that I follow named Jane French she has a great Instagram account where she really like kind of shows this off you can follow Jane French artists on Instagram she's awesome she's way better than me um, she kind of does her whole paintings like this where she just blocks in colors and leaves them they're like really exaggerated but they look awesome in the end and I've tried to do this and it looks terrible when I finish it. So um, I just kind of use this as an example, like picking out little spots, filling them in with color. And uh, in the end, we're gonna blend them um, to make it look a little more realistic. Now is time for the magic of a clean brush and oil paint. So you just go over all of your spots, follow the lines of the face and blend them together. And look how easily this happens with oil paint. That's why I use oil paint rather than acrylic because acrylic dries super fast. So uh, by the time we'd be blending all this stuff, it would already be dry. You wouldn't be able to do this. You'd have to do it while you were painting. So this is like what we're gonna do for all of step one. We're just going to block in colors all over the face, go back and blend them with a clean brush. And this is this is all step one we're just going to get paint on the canvas and blend it 
things you want to focus on here are the eyes, nose, and mouth. In my opinion, they are like kind of the cornerstones of the painting, right? You can't screw those up. For everything else, you can pretty much do whatever you want. But as long as you have the eyes, nose, and the mouth look like the person you're painting, you're going to be good in the end. Um, I also want to use some thin paint here. I'm thinning my paint down a lot. I'm not using thick paint. We're going to use thick paint later. Thick paint looks awesome, but uh, if you use it here, it's going to screw you up later. You're not going to be able to go over things super easy. So thin paint, block everything in, blend it together. Basic, uh, basic colors on the painting. I mean, at this point, you can do whatever you want color-wise. You can go crazy like Jane does in the snapshot I showed kind of big bold colors i'm going to do some of that later we'll see what happens i don't know kind of however however the painting goes but for now what i'm doing here is really basic colors white burn umber um, pink just just getting like a real good underpainting of basic skin tones and that's all of step one and uh you can kind of see this this whole step probably only took me maybe an hour from start to finish um might take you a little longer i've been doing this for a bit but um as you can see now as we finish up the blending on the face we went from just a really kind of crappy outline of danny devito to what looks kind of recognizable so this is a um this is a good step it's always like a really satisfying step seeing your face come together and um it only gets worse from here. It's just a lot of disappointment to follow. But yeah, like I said, the step, the step's pretty cool. I like how it's going so far. So it's a win. And now it's time for stage two, guys. And um, stage two is a rough one. I would say if this entire painting takes me ten hours, stage one probably takes about an hour. Stage three takes about an hour. And uh, just in case you're bad at math, that means stage two takes about 47 hours. We're gonna start laying down some thicker paint here. I don't use a lot of thinner in this stage and we need to start making decisions. You can either go the route of staying super faithful to your picture and I would recommend using a color checker uh, if you're gonna do that, if you wanna get the colors to be exactly like your reference. Making a color checker is very simple. You would just take a reference, you would laminate it, and then every time you would mix a color, you would dab it on the laminate and see how it matches up next to the actual picture. Or, or you can get crazy and just start adding in color. Uh, that's kind of what I generally like to do. Uh, I think it looks more interesting. And honestly, I just do not have the patience to do the color checker thing for every single brush stroke. It kills me. Throughout this whole step, I'm going to continue going back to the eyes, the nose, and the mouth and kind of just tighten up those areas because I feel like those areas need to look as photorealistic as we're capable of, which doesn't have to be super photorealistic, but more so than the rest of the face. Um, Toward the end of the project, at least, I'll start to add a lot of thicker paint toward the other parts of the face, make them maybe look a little more abstract if I can, I, kind of whatever looks good. Um, I, I really try to model this section after my favorite portrait artist, which is Colin Davidson. This is Colin's Instagram. He's amazing. You should definitely follow him. And I love how his portraits just really highlight the fact that if you nail the nose and the eyes, the eyes specifically, you can really get the likeness of this person while still having a bunch of abstraction in the rest of the, the features. Like eyes are perfect. Nose is perfect. Like what the heck is going on here? Is this like supposed to be a cheek, but it's just globs of paint, man. But it looks great. I mean, it looks just like Ed Sheeran. and looks amazing. And that's why this guy is you know, making a lot more money than me. So that's going to be my motivation for the rest of this piece. Although it's definitely not going to work out because I am not Colin Davidson. Anytime I try to just make huge abstractions like that over large portions of the face, it's a huge fail for me. But um, it's kind of like in the back of my mind while we're working on this whole thing. 
So as you can see, I'm applying paint over paint over paint. This step is a ton of trial and error for me. Uh, speaking of error, I'm pretty sure I just accidentally grabbed some black on the side of my paintbrush and screwed up this part. I'm, I'm picking out colors I think will look good. I fail miserably. I mix another color. I put that down over top. It looks even worse. And then we start over. And this is like eight hours of this, ladies and gentlemen. This is just failing and failing and trying to fix my screw ups until eventually we turn out with, uh, you know, what's a, a, a decent likeness of Danny DeVito. Um, you know, I'm, I'm making these voiceovers as I paint. So I haven't seen the end product yet. You have probably in the thumbnail. So uh, hopefully it's not total garbage. Um, if it is, I don't, why'd you click on this video? So you'll see I keep going back to the eyes and the nose, the most important parts that make Danny DeVito recognizable. For everything else in the face, I don't really look at my reference anymore. I mean, I'll, I'll glance up at it. What I use it for most at this point, other than the immediate features, is lights and darks. I need the light areas to be light and the dark areas to be dark because that's what's gonna give you like the 3D effect that makes your, your picture look real. It makes your painting look real. So there's something else you can do during this. I do throughout the entire painting, which is constantly take photos of my painting and match them up against the actual reference. Obviously the problem with that is that your painting is gonna look like garbage next to the actual thing. So don't get too disheartened. So through this whole process, I'm just looking through little tiny lines, little things that are off in the eyes and the nose, whatever makes my painting look not quite right. Obviously in this example, uh, Danny DeVito looks pink next to uh, the actual photo, so I know I gotta change that later, but uh, that's, for, that's for future Joe. All right, now it's time for the final stage. Stage three, finishing touches where we just add little details thicker paint, highlights, just finish the thing off. When do you know that you've gotten to this stage? When can you start on the finishing touches? This is a great question. I don't think anybody actually knows the answer to this. For me, it's kind of when I'm working and nothing's really getting any better and nothing's really getting any worse. I'm just doing stuff. So that means it's time for me to end my painting. And this is the point where I'm gonna take a page out of another famous artist book, Al Fe, which is just trash your reference. As Al Pay would say, when is anyone ever going to look at your painting and the reference side by side? Never, it's never gonna happen, but we're always judging ourselves off of it, right? So take your reference, throw it in the garbage, and at this point, just do what looks good. This is Al Pay Fe. Follow him on Instagram, follow him on YouTube. He makes a lot of good content, a lot of how-to videos. He shows how he paints, and he's kind of like the Zen artist. And he just makes these beautiful portraits that um, I can't recreate, but it's, follow him, you'll understand. So now I'm just adding thicker paint, I'm trying to make sure my colors look the way I want them to look. I'm doing the little tiny details of the end. I'm, I'm adding in the, the tiny hairs on Danny DeVito's face, the shine on his glasses, the, the little highlights under the eye, um, his wispy weirdo hairs that stick off the top of his head. All this little stuff that just adds these details that you're painting um, that, that really make it, give it that finished look in the end. Some helpful hints I've learned in this point from watching everybody else's YouTube videos and making a bunch of paintings myself is use different tools for this step. Use a palette knife for smooth areas. Use uh, old brushes, new brushes, big brushes, small brushes. Get all these different textures in because it really adds to the paint. And as you can see, there's not really a rhyme or reason about what I'm doing here. I'm all over the place. I'm looking at the painting up close, far away, looking at things I don't like, changing little things, going back, changing them again, just like we did in the previous step. Um, there's, there's no set role here. 
I'm really just doing whatever I want to do to make the painting look the way I want it to look. Um, the goal from the beginning of this wasn't to make a super realistic, hyper realistic Danny DeVito portrait. It was to make something fun that I can hang on my wall and look at and kind of laugh. And if it looks like Danny DeVito, then I'm happy in the end. Um, it's colorful, it looks pretty cool, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with what we got going on so far. So let's just watch the rest. So this is it, we're done. This is Danny DeVito. And uh, I hope you guys learned a lot. I hope you, I don't know, like the process. I hope it works out for you. Definitely try it, it's a lot of fun. And this turned out to be a cool little project. It maybe took me something like eight hours over the course of five or six days. And I'm pretty happy with it. And I get to put it on my wall of stupid stuff next to the other dumb things that I paint. And it's a lot of fun. So I really recommend trying it out. Um, hopefully you guys have success. If you don't, you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comments. I'll try to answer and, uh, like, and subscribe or whatever, you know, that people are supposed to say at the end of YouTube videos.